see game? Because we talked a lot last season about how their defense was garbage. What impressed you most in that matchup? I think number one, they were physical at the point of attack. They were aggressive, and their new defensive coordinator, DeAnthony Lynn, this young man is masterful for this unit. And shout out to Lincoln Riley for going out and stealing him from UCLA. But it's all about moments and when you can get stops. And just like Washington Huskies last year, they made it to a national championship even though they didn't win it. When you needed to get stops, they were able to do that throughout the year. So it was the first fourth down of the game. You know, LSU drove all the way down. They were able to get a stop. Third and one late in that ball game as well. They were able to get a stop again. And then they sealed the game with an interception. So I really like USC being physical at the point of attack, being instinctive, but also in key moments, being able to get stops and create turnovers. It was a more confident team, was it not? Yes. I mean, even early on, they were making every single open field tackle. And that's not even just with the defense. That's with Miller Moss. Like, if you are a quarterback playing for Lincoln Riley, given his resume of what he has done with quarterbacks, whether it be Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, or most recently Caleb Williams, you should be able to go out there and have a moxie about yourself, and you saw that with him. And to me, that is going to be the difference between USC being good and them being great this year. All right, let's go over to the ACC because things look very interesting, specifically with Florida State, who now is 0-2 on the season, obviously losing to Georgia Tech, and then Boston College. Now, a lot of the blame goes on DJ Uyangalale, but what do you see when it comes to the Noles? What do you think is the biggest issue this season so far? I'll start offensively. I don't think they have an identity. They don't know if they want to be a running team or a passing team. They're trying to pass the football, but that's not what their personnel tells you they should be doing. But then I look on the defensive side of the ball. That was supposed to be a, a wonderful unit in 2024. They're getting out physical. And I go back to the Georgia Tech game in London with six minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock. Florida State never seen the football again. Georgia Tech ended up kicking a game with a field goal. But then you look at the Boston College game. They were getting beat up up front. They rushed the football effectively and had the ball 18 more minutes than that Florida State offense. So they, they're going to have to feel, figure out this physical presence because they don't have it right now. What they were getting yeah. bullied, HD. In that second half, they, Boston College was averaging 6.4 yards per carry. Four and a half before contact. You're basically getting half a first down before you even see a guy touch you, right? I mean, like, that's the, that is the most glaring thing about Florida State's start, is they haven't shown you that they can do anything particularly well, and I think if you're Mike Morvell, and actually, I'm actually curious for your perspective on this as somebody that played, when you're going into a bye week like this after losing two games that you just lost like that, how much can you actually build and get together as you go into another week where they're going to be playing, <coughs> excuse me, a Memphis team that is extremely experienced? I think, number one, you have to self-scout. And from a coaching staff perspective, you got to say to yourself, okay, where did we wrong these young men by not putting them in the best situations to be successful? And then you go from there. And at the end of the day, players make plays. Coaches got to put them in the proper positions, but the coaches are not out there on the field. So for those young men on defense, offense, wide receiver position, running back, O-line, you got to go out there and make plays when they present themselves. I do want to ask you, too, because a lot of the blame does get put on DJ, as I mentioned. How much blame? should we be putting on the quarterback? I would say about 60%. Okay. Because if the quarterback position isn't right, it's hard for your offense to go. So it's just that simple for me. He has to be better. He has to make throws, especially when you have the gimmies. The gimme throws, yeah. when you have free access and there's no press coverage on your wide receivers at the line of scrimmage, you have to be consistent. Consistency is key. Okay, he was 13 for 30 on throws, deeper than five yards. You got to be better yeah, than that. Yeah, it's got to be better than that. Let's talk about the team that he used to play for, Clemson, because the they've boys. had a pretty rough start as well. Losing to Georgia, they just had three points in that matchup, which is the fewest that they've scored with Dabo as a head coach. What the heck? Hey, man. <laughs> Look. Part of it is the recruit, not, not, not playing the portal, just part yeah. of it. But I got to get clips in this, bro. Georgia's lost two games the last three years. Yeah. They're 24 0 in SEC play the last three seasons. Like, that is, they are in a tier in their own in college football right now. Like, this is the closest thing that we've seen to the dynasty that a coach that uh, you guys will see here later, Phil. Uh, so, I. I I think it's a mix. I think the biggest thing, though, again, with Dabo not playing the portal is not just because of the results that you saw last Saturday. It's that you had a superpower and you let that go because you thought you're doing things the right way. 
and yeah. it's just not true. Yeah, a rough start this season. Obviously, we expected them to possibly lose to Georgia because it is Georgia. However, we didn't expect them to lose that bad. Can we talk about a team that did loss? They're, they're, under, they're undefeated on the season. Hey, you know who, who would that though? team be, Chris? Yeah, who would they be? Who would they be? I just want to, I just want I mean, you look like you got, it's Forest Green, but it's almost University of Miami Green. I do, I want to say a few things. Obviously, Cam Ward, I feel like he's been the best quarterback that we've had since we were able to call Miami quarterback we? you. Are you French? <laughs> we used to call Miami quarterback you. But here's the thing that I want to be very careful of, right? Great win in at Florida. It was amazing. Great to watch. The one thing that does bother me a little bit is, and I think um, that Mario Cristobal said this very well. He said after the game, there's so much hype around us and we love it, but we have to put in the work. So it was great on Saturday. We celebrated a little bit. We celebrated on Sunday as well. But seeing Monday when people kept talking about it, I was like, bro, we have to chill. We have to chill before something happens. Because, you know, Miami could Miami. Well, let me say this. The quarterback position is key for Miami. Right. Cam Ward, he's a guy that's cool, calm, and collected. He can play within the confines of the system, but he can also improvise. Yeah. When he gets outside of the pocket, he's not looking to run. He's still looking to pass, but he has the ability to be able to break a defense down. Yep. And when you look at what Mario Cristobal has been able to build over the last two years with these recruiting classes, I like Miami. It's great to be a Miami Hurricane. Hey, it's great do it now to be a Miami Hurricane. Miami, Miami, anyway. <laughs> the rest of the season for the first time in a long time, even though we always start every season like this. Very excited about our quarterbacks, but I feel like Cam Ward is doing a little bit different.